I've been getting asked a bunch recently, Cam, how are your sonar settings, or sonar pictures, I should say, so clear? You know, you can see, you can see a little one pound fish on a tree at 100 feet. How do you do that? Well, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how they are set up. I wanna show you guys, I wanna help you guys, I wanna make sure that you guys are getting the best possible picture out of your sonar electronics that you possibly can. So at this point, let's jump over to my Lowrance unit and we're gonna go through, again, all of my settings on each of the sonar systems that I have to help you guys get a better picture. Let's go. All right, guys, so we are officially at my Lowrance unit, and again, this video is specifically for what my settings are on all of my sonar systems. So that is the main goal of this. I'm just gonna run through my settings and show you guys exactly how I have my system set up. Is it going to work for everybody? No. Is it going to work on every lake? No, you're going to have to adjust your settings based on the clarity of the water, based on the depth that you're in, and based on the amount of detail that you want to see. So you can play with all of those settings to find what works for you. This is, however, works for me perfectly. It's super clear, super crisp. Again, I can see minnows from 100 feet, I feel like. I always joke around and say that, but let's jump into it. Let's jump into it right away. So right here, we're at our traditional 2D sonar. And if I go here to our menu, I'm just gonna kind of burn down these settings that, again, are associated with 2D sonar. So over here, I have the mode in freshwater, pretty clear, uh, clear there, no issues. Again, I fish a lot of bass tournaments and it's always in fresh water. That's what I'm trying to say. So it stays in fresh. My range is going to stay on auto. Most of the time, that's completely fine with me. Again, this is for 2D sonar. This is not forward facing. This is not anything like that. This is simply 2D sonar. I can actually, I will actually do a separate video on my forward facing sonar settings for Lowrance units. So that, that'll be a separate video. But as here, range is auto, that's for 2D. My frequency is I always use high chirp. It's, you know, it's just the highest clarity, highest frequency that you can get when, you know, sending the pings to the bottom. Sensitivity, I always keep my sensitivity above. So it's on auto right now. I should say that it's on auto. However, you can adjust the auto uh, plus, you know, plus or minus. So you can play with this. And as you guys can see, the lower you get, the less image that shows up on your screen. The higher you get, the more you can't see anything. So you wanna find a balance with that. I normally go auto and then I normally add, you know, plus two or plus three. I think this was on plus two, just to keep some of that surface clarity out, but it still allows me to see everything that I need to in this picture. So that's my sensitivity is auto plus two. And again, this is just what works for me and where I'm at in the clarity of my water. Next, we jump into the color line, and the color line is the colors that show up in your, your actual picture. So the higher we go, the more yellow we get, the lower we go, I believe it's blue. Yeah, that's exactly right. So I normally like to keep mine at about, you know, 76. Um, you can blow it up, 80. Again, you're just, you guys can see as I play with this, it just adjusts the colors, and what you want is when you're passing over fish, you want a hard yellow return or rock, that means hard bottom. So whatever works for you guys just to see the hardest return, again, on hard bottom in fish, that's what you're looking for. And for me, that is about 76. So I think that's default, like right out of the, right out of the package. If we go into advanced settings, so again, advanced is right below color line. Then we have our other details, again, advanced de details, I should say. Our first one is noise rejection. That's gonna be, you know, if there's a lot of waves, uh, I'm sorry, external noises, stuff like that. I always keep that on low. It just seems to keep the screen moderately clear. If we turn this off, it doesn't make a big difference, guys. If we turn it on high, I wouldn't do that. It's just gonna not return as much details, so I just keep it on low. Surface clarity, if there's a lot of disturbance at the surface, if you're in maybe a river or in the ocean or something and a lot of current and you're getting a lot of interference up high, you can go ahead and turn off, or I'm sorry, turn on these settings 
And again, as you guys can see here, it high completely eliminated all of our surface clarity. So I keep that at off. I'm not really worried about what's happening, you know, at, at five feet, from zero to five feet, pretty much anywhere I fish. So that doesn't really matter to me at all. So I just keep that turned off. Scroll speed, keep it at normal. You can adjust this if you want. I've always kept it at normal, no problems there. The whole goal with this is with the, with the scroll speed, the slower you bring the scroll speed, the more detail it's going to give you. However, you're, it's gonna be super slow. It's gonna be super behind you. And same thing, if you're going super fast, as you guys can see, it blows out and you're not gonna get a lot of detail. So I like to just keep that at normal. It's, you know, it is what it is. It had zero issues with that. So that's what I would keep it at. And then ping speed, max. So that ping is, uh, you guys, if you guys, are swimming in the water, you're scuba diving, or not scuba diving, but snorkeling or something, you can actually hear the ping of the transducer itself in the water. And every time, uh, the way it works, every time there's a ping that's sent out into the water, that's when you get a return. So the more pings that you set out there, the more details basically that the computer can process about what's underneath you. So for me, turn that all the way up to max and you'll just get more detail. That's that. So that's our advanced button there. Uh, this is source. I, again, that's just has to do with where the transducer is. If we go into more options, we can go to, into what my favorite colors are. Uh, I like palette one. That's my personal favorite. You can mess around with this. I mean, there's all sorts of crazy stuff. I mean, they got a bunch of different colors here. One for me for traditional 2D works perfectly. There's a bunch of different options about like what you can add. You can add a depth line, temperature. I don't mess with any of that stuff, guys. I, I really don't, no fish ID, no nothing. So in terms of those settings, I mean, that's about it for my 2D. That's what gives me the perfect clarity. Again, with these specific settings for me, I get everything and then some that I could ever expect out of a picture on traditional 2D sonar. If you guys have enjoyed this or learned some of these settings to help your sonar run crystal clear and at 100%, go ahead and drop a like down below. Let me know what your favorite brand of electronics for fishing or sonar is down in the comments below. Also consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's jump back into more settings for our sonar. So now let's jump into downscan. So downscan is kind of the new, I don't want to say new, it's a different type of sonar. It's a completely different type of sonar. It returns differently and it allows you to cross-reference what you are actually seeing on the bottom. Opposed to 2D sonar, it does not give you as much detail. Downscan will give you, in my opinion, more detail. So this is my downscan, as you guys can see here. And this is in red right now. I play a lot uh, with these colors. I've run, you know, a bunch of these different colors. Blue's pretty good. Ten's one of my favorites. Uh, three's pretty hard. You know, that's that's my favorite. Probably number one again is my favorite. Red's pretty good too. Again, just for distinguishing individual features on the bottom. But let's go to this blue real quick just to walk through all the settings. So now that we're on the settings for this, so you guys can see over here on this page. Uh, again, source is just where the transducer is coming from. My depth range, I, same thing as 2D. I keep that on auto. I've had zero issues with that whatsoever. As we jump into contrast, that's going to be kind of like your sensitivity that we talked about in 2D. And the more we jack this up, uh, the more it's going to blow out. And the less we do, the less detail it's going to give us. So I keep this on auto as well, kind of contrary to what a lot of people do. I keep this on auto, but again, plus or minus, I'm sorry, mostly plus uh, one or two compared to the auto setting. So that's kind of what I leave it on there. And then we already discussed palette. Choose your favorite colors, guys. Go around, go around and just graph a bunch of things that you're looking at and change the colors and kind of see what shows up best to your eye. Everyone's different and again, it's simply for you to be able to see fish and structure. So whatever pops the most, that's what you want to stick with. And then if we jump into advanced, again, we already talked about surface clarity. For this one particularly, I like to keep it on low, again, or off. My, it's, I'm really not worried about from zero to five feet, so it doesn't really matter here. And then 
In terms of more options, there's really nothing else here. I don't use range lines. I don't like that. It clutters up the screen, in my opinion, and it's, it's just really not necessary. I mean, you can take a peek. It's not like you're looking like, oh, that fish is at 31.37 feet. Like, it doesn't matter. So for me, it's like, oh, the fish are roughly at, you know, 30 feet. It's good enough for me, and you know, if I decide to fish there, that's all I really need to know. You're not gonna need to dial it into the nearest inch to be able to figure out where these fish are, so keep those grid lines off. That's my opinion. So that kind of covers our down scan sonar setup. Now let's finally jump into my side scan settings. So for this one, again, there's source, our range. This is a good one. So for this sonar in particular, I normally keep my range at 100 to 120 feet. I believe 100 to 120 feet gives me the most detail and allows me to see everything that I need to see that's at least fishable. When you start jumping into a higher range that's up here, you know, 150, 200, 300, you're not gonna be able to distinguish rocks and stuff like that. Everything, it's gonna be so tiny, you're not gonna be able to see it. And same thing, I, again, I fish deeper water, so that's why I like this. But if I was on shallower water, you might only be able to go out, you know, 40 or 50, 60 feet because of the depth of water that you're in. But I normally fish deep water, and again, 120 feet is my perfect range. Frequency, this is a big one where people struggle and they say they're not getting the clarity out of their, out of their units is they have it on the lower kilohertz setting. So again, that's just a frequency of the sonar and a lower frequency is going to give you more range or depth. Normally they use an offshore fishing is a lower frequency because they can see further down, but it's going to give you less detail. And so what you guys want to do is just make sure that that's on at least 800. If you guys are on Humminbird or another, uh, another setting, just make sure that's on the max kilohertz setting. Contrast, this is kind of like our sensitivity. As you can see over here, for me, I use auto. Again, it's kind of same as the other ones. However, in this particular case, I use plus five. So again, higher we jack that up, more you know, washed out it's going to be. And the less that we move it down, we uh, are gonna lose detail and clarity. But I like contrast. I normally jack it up. Again, when I'm using side scan in particular, this type of sonar, I like to use this for structure. I don't necessarily use it for fish. I use it for structure and bait. So most of the time, I don't really care about seeing, you know, a lot of specks in the water and everything like that. I am strictly looking for, you know, hard returns of brush, timber, big rock piles, or I'm sorry, just rocks in general, channel swings, and then balls of bait, which are normally huge and they'll show up just fine. So I like a higher contrast on that. The palette for this, again, personal preference. I like palette number 10. That's normally what I use. That shows up best for me. Play around with all the colors, as you guys can see here. There's a bunch of different options. Same thing when we go into advanced, you can flip it, don't do that. And surface clarity, again, I keep it at low. Doesn't really matter if you're you know, fishing beyond five feet deep. That's just for that top of that water. So that's about it. Again, range lines turned off again for this one. That's about it for all of the settings on my sonar. Let me show you guys real quick how, when I'm running, I'll show you guys kind of this, my map here. You guys, I guess I'll get a couple of little, uh, little waypoints here if you're paying attention. But this is normally when I'm graphing. Again, I only have one unit at the console. That's, uh, it is what it is for right now. It works perfectly for me, it's fishing. I mean, would I like to have more? Yes. Is it worth it? Yeah, probably if you're fishing really competitively, but it, uh, it is what it is. Like I said, you don't need a crazy budget and I think these are on sale right now. But anyway, that's beside the point. This is how I normally uh, run my sonar setup. I run mapping right here, I run 2D right here, and then I'll run down scan right there. And again, I use these normally to cross reference what I'm seeing. You'll see good arches on the traditional 2D and returns. And then over here, you don't always know, you know, if the fish are on the bottom, if this is going to be a stump or a log or it's an actual fish, you can go over here and again, cross reference what you're seeing over here on traditional uh, 2D with down scan. So that's how I run that. And then I only run side scan again when I'm looking for cover. If I'm looking again for channel swings and uh, all the stuff that I already mentioned, that's the only time I'll run down scan. 
I'm sorry, side scan, and I will be looking for those features. But again, I don't need much. I'm just looking for them, and then I'll go ahead and drop a waypoint. Super easy. Just click where it's at, hit that waypoint button, and uh, you can see anything you want to. So that's kind of my searching page. And then once I already know, again, I just split this into my map, my 2D, and my down scan. And that's kind of the setup I run with, again, if I'm dialing in. I mean, if I already know where stuff is and I'm particularly looking for like fish, like actual fish shitting on, you know, the bottom or in the water column, stuff like that. That's what I'll normally use to uh, dial it in even further. Hopefully you guys learned something like from this video. If you did, go ahead, drop a like on the video below, comment your favorite electronics sonar setup and subscribe to the channel. But as always, thank you guys so much. Hopefully you guys learned from something from this one and I will be back with more info on all of this stuff soon. Talk to you later, guys.